Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter for the next 20 minutes. Today we are going to be talking about the individual records tabs when you're working in membership in people. So the, there's a lot of tabs, they do a lot of different things, so I'm going to go through each one of those and teach you how they work and how you can utilize them if you wish within your church or your organization. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what I did was I pulled up membership and I went into people and I went to this Bernard family. So the Bernard family has a lot of really good information on them. So I want to make sure um, that we use utilize this family just because they have some great information and I think it'll be most beneficial for the different tabs that we're going to go over. So when you go into people and you use this person lookup field and you pull up a family you're going to see on the left every single person that makes up the family. It's going to be listed down here. Now for the family, the family also has tabs across the top left. So these are specific to the family unit as a whole. And then over here on the right, we have our specific tabs for the individual that were highlighted on. And for this instance, we're looking at Evan Bernard. But as I click through the different family members, you'll see this first, what I call the name tab, is going to change to show you specifically who you're looking at. Okay. <clears throat> And again, you have those family tabs on the left. We Josh actually did the webinar for me earlier in the month on the, the family tabs. So if you want information on the family tabs, head out to our website and just look at the, the family uh, record tabs webinar and you'll be able to get the information on that, okay? All right, so let's start here, the first tab. This is going to be the name tab. This is where you really put in the specific or customizable information that you want for Evan specifically, okay? Now these fields down here, we have a webinar on how to create fields down here and do some customizing. But these fields down here, when you buy the software, you're gonna get some of our default fields. Uh, but you can come over here into the Customize Fields option, and you can go in, you can reorder, you can create new fields, you can use the little pencil to create new codes within the field that you're working on, and you can reorder them too. So a lot of times people like to kind of group the contact information together or the fields they utilize the most they put up at the beginning, and then the fields they don't use as much they'll put down towards the bottom. No right or wrong answer how you organize these fields. Just know that they are customizable and it's up to you which ones you want to see and the order that you need to see them in, okay? All right, so let's go to the first field here, the group or the first tab, I should say. This is the groups and classes tab. So this is where you're going to go in and you can set individually what groups and classes someone wants to be a part of. Okay, so the groups and classes which are listed here in this first column, these have to be set up first. Okay, we do have a webinar on where to go to set up groups and classes. You can do it right here with the little pencil or you can come up to the top under groups and skills and then set up groups. So once you have those groups set up, coming here to this groups and classes tab allows you to not only see the groups and classes that someone is already a part of, but you can also, for them individually, add more groups to their record. So looking here, we can see there's an ad hoc committee, there's a men's group, parents for Sunday school classes group, and then a trustees group. You also have a start date and an end date column, Using the date fields is optional. You can fill in the role if you wish, so what role they play within the specific group. Comments, here's just an open character field. You can type in whichever you want. You can put in the date they transfer out of the group, and then you can put in the reason why they transferred. Again, anytime you see this little pencil, that means you have the option to edit or create new codes for the specific field that you're clicked in. Okay, now let's say we want to add Evan to another group. Right here at the top it says click here to add a new row. So I'm just going to click, you can click anywhere in this space and as soon as you click that new row is going to be created and then you're going to specify what group or class we want Evan to be a part of. So I'm going to choose Bible study for this example. You can put in the start date. 
I'm going to put in June 1st. We don't have to put in an end date. And then a role, you can pick from one of the following roles, or you can, again, use that pencil to create a new role if it doesn't exist. Type in any comments that you wish. And as simple as that, you've now added him to another group or class. Okay? If you ever need to remove a group or class, a little red minus sign, that's always going to be your delete option, okay? So you can come in here, hit the little minus, and you can delete the group off of his record, or you can put an end date to show when he stopped being in the group, all right? Okay, skills and interests. So skills and interests, this is different from groups and classes, and these are things that people have interest in helping with or schools, uh, uh, skills that they are good at. Some people call it time and talents. It's up to you, um, but it's basically a way to organize the things that people can be helpful with or how they can serve with, okay? So as you look here, it says under Evan, he has a skill in electrical. Again, these, using the pencil, you can go in and create as many as you wish, or you can come up here to the top and do setup skills. The level just shows where he falls within that skill or interest. So for this, it says uh, professional. So maybe that is his job. He's an electrician. And then you could put comments over here as well. And by having skills and interests set up, you could easily run a report on everyone that, ha that has a skill of electrical. And then you can see, say you need somebody to do some work at the church and you need a professional to do it. This would be a great report to run to see that Evan fits that mold and he would be someone worth contacting. Okay. Uh, music, instrumental, he's an active participant. Plumbing, it's a skill he has, but there isn't a level filled in, so you don't always have to have a level put in on someone, but it is helpful too. And then youth work, and we have active participant here as well, okay? Here's open comments field, minus sign to remove it, and then again, click here to add a new row. If we want to create or add a new skill to him, we can also put carpentry in there. Let's say he's a super handy guy. We can add that, and now it's added to his record as well, all right? Next tab, the addresses, phones, and email field. I really like this tab because it takes all of the contact information that you've put in for Evan and it puts it in one nice spot. It's kind of like your computerized Rolodex, if you will. So this is a really nice tab for you to quickly see someone's contact information. Up here at the top, you do have an address field. This should only be used if Evan individually, because we're on his individual record, has an alternative address. So this is good for, say, kids who go off to college and their family as a whole is still at this address, but just that one kid is at a different address for a part of the year. This is where you would want to add that alternate address just for that specific person. Okay, if the family as a whole has an alternate address, say they go to Florida, you could come over here and add the alternate address for the family. But again, this is just for the specific person's record that you're looking at. Comments field, this is just an open character field. You can type in whatever you want in here. Um, I just typed something in here, Evan is Pastor Brown's brother, but again, you could type in anything you want in here. This is really handy for showing like different family relations, like my whole side of the family goes to the same church. So this might be a really good example of kind of letting people know who's who and who's related and things like that. Uh, but again, you can put whatever you want in the comments field. It's a, a completely open character field for you. Uh, photo field. This is really handy. It allows you to add a individual photo. So if you were in the webinar with Josh earlier in the month, you have a photo field on the left. This is a photo for the family, okay? The photo field on the right here, this is for the individual. So this would be handy if you wanted to run like you're a committee. So Evan, for example, was part of a committee. We could put everyone who's in that committee's photo in here, and then you could print a directory with just these people's photo, okay? So I went out to the internet before this, and I grabbed a random headshot of somebody. Um, but I can show you how to add it. It's really, really simple. Just make sure when you get a photo of someone, you save it somewhere you can access. So on your local computer, on a flash drive, what have you. And all you do is hit Add Picture. And then you browse to the location of where that photo is. 
simply select the photo, hit open, and then that person's photo, their headshot, whatever it might be, will just pop right in here on their record and then you can save it. All right, so again, this is really handy for if you want to run like a committee directory or something like that, or maybe um, you want to you have new members and you want to print new members pictures you could use this or you could use the family photo option as well you can also remove the picture or rotate the photo if needed okay again church windows is not a photo editing software so you are very limited to the changes you can make of a photo if you have things you need to change of the photo you need to do that before you put it into church windows because your only options here are going to be to add it remove it or rotate it okay the last option, this is new, this is a Files and Documents tab. This is going to allow you to upload files or documents to a specific individual's record. So for today's example, let's say we want to put uh, their marriage certificate for Evan and his wife on Evan's record. All you would need to do is hit Add File, go to the location of where you put it, and then open it and now that document is going to save to that specific person's record so this is really handy um, if you have kids who need to turn in a health form or have a permission slip or maybe they're going on mission trips and they need to have something signed by their parents this is a nice way for you to digitally organize those files and those documents right onto the individual's record okay you can also extract the file so you can pull them down if you need to or you can delete them okay now those are the specific individual tabs three other things i want to point out to you as well just because the book goes over this on page 35 they're taught with they're talking about these three little buttons right here okay these three little buttons i think it overlooked quite a bit but they are pretty handy uh, this print individual button this allows you to print just evan just a specific person's information on a report or a label or you can email them directly right from their record so if i want to do a report let's just say i want to do an all information report for everything that i have on evan going to choose the all information layout with the basic all information template. I'm going to quickly hit print and that is going to give me a report of absolutely every piece of information that I have on Evan and I can easily send it off to my printer. The next button right here, this is a uh, directions. So this allows you to print off directions from your church address to the person's home address okay so if you hit get directions it's going to link up to your internet browser and take you to Google Maps and then it's going to give you information to print out again this was utilized quite a bit more before everybody had cell phones that or, or cars that gave you the directions of exactly where you need to go but this might be a quick way to say if you're the pastor or somebody who's going to visit someone and you just need to know how far away it is you're not going yet but you just need to know this is a good way to see how far away it is from your church location to where you're going. Uh, the last option is just a simple copy tool. If you click this, it's going to grab Evan's address information and basically highlight and copy it. And then you can post it. So I just opened up WordPad here. You can just right click and paste and then it's going to just take their address information, essentially their mailing label and their address and just copy it for you for you to easily take their address somewhere else with a simple copy paste.